some of them? Can you say that you actually remember some of them? No, right now. I get it. Mm -hmm. When you take notes of new vocabulary, how do you do it? I usually take in a, in a notebook and I try to to make a summary of the word or the meaning of the word. Good. In English or in Spanish? No, in English. I good. I take it in English. Yes, that's a very good idea. The summary comes from the definition from the from the dictionary, and you can take just the most important information and put it in, no? Yesterday, we learned some vocabulary. Do you remember any of the words we learned yesterday? Yesterday? No, two days ago, because yesterday we only talked about IELTS. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about um, the character of- Oh, yes, of Psycho. No, I don't remember the name. American Psycho. American Psycho, yeah. Yeah, what do you remember about this guy? Um, no, I don't remember any new words. Okay, what about Chris? What do you remember about this guy? Mm, no, I don't remember. Dude, well, that's exactly the point. <laughs> that's exactly why we are going to talk about the glossary, okay? So the rest, all the rest of my classes, they have this implemented already. And I thought that my advanced students would like do it by reflex, but I guess we need to teach about it, okay? I'm gonna show you how they use it. I tell my students, like the early ones who need vocabulary to use the following format. I tell them to write the new word plus the pronunciation, especially using the pronunciation because sometimes it's difficult to pronounce some, some of them. The word family, in case you understand grammar, of course, if you want to, to use the correct word, you should consider the word family. Then use a definition or an easier synonym. What, me, what means with easier synonym is if my word is C1, what is another form, another way to say the same word with vocabulary that I know, that I am familiar with? For example, the other day we saw, let's say, Let's go to word lists, home, and let's go to the 5,000, and then we filter by, by B2 and C1. Anytime, there we go. So let's say we have the word, for example, arise. This is a B2 word, not that easy, right? And then we have here, synonym or core. This is the best way to memorize more difficult words. Every time I read arise, I need to understand it similar to the word occur or a formal way to say happen. And then you can do this. An opportunity arose to work in the United States. Change arose for the synonym. And how does it read, Christian? Mm. 
an opportunity an opportunity mm. Arrow. an opportunity to start eliminate to start, start. To because the word to means that this is an infinitive verb and this mm. verb is not in infinitive form. In what tense is this? The... What time is this? Is this present? If the verb is arise in simple form, what time do you think is this? Okay. Exactly. Automatically, you would need to associate the word occur in past. How do you say it? Occur in past? Mm -hmm. It's a regular verb. Occurred. Perfect. So replace the word arose with the word occurred. An opportunity occurred to work in the United States. Occurred to work in the United States. That is correct. Very good. So what you need to do is this. You take the examples. You can take the example from the Oxford Dictionary, right? And then replace the word with the synonym that you have underneath the word arise in this case. Take a screenshot. Oh, oh what happened? C2. Asian. There we go. So we have this definition and a synonym. And what you need to do is to take the definition and the first example and copy this example in a way that you can understand the word with simple words. An opportunity arose to work in the United States. As you said, uh, Chris, an opportunity occurred to work in the United States or an opportunity in the definition we have to happen. Chris, uh, no, sorry, Isaac. Replace the word, the word arose with happen. Okay, an opportunity happened and to work in the United in the United States. That's it. And then you can understand how this word works. Do you understand how to make this? How to what, sorry? How to make this? How oh, to yes. build your glossary? Yes. That's the tip I recommend to do every time you have a very strange word, especially with phrasal verbs, do this. This is the way you are going to memorize phrasal verbs. And this is the way you are going to memorize the vehicle words. The book of corrections, I recommend my, my earlier students like intermediate and, and lower intermediate 
beginners to have a book of corrections. Uh, in your case, I recommend better to use more like a grammar note on how to use the word, you know? Like if you have a, if you have a, an adverb, how do you use an adverb? If you have an adjective, how do you use the adjective? Notes like don't confuse this with this, you know? So in your case, we are not going to use a book of corrections. We are going to use a grammar note in which you take, consider possible confusions. For example, the difference between loose versus loss. And give me an example. Consider possible confusions and also consider when the word can be replaced by instead of a single word. What do you understand on the grammar note? Mm. That they relate a complicated word or new word with word that they already dominate? That they already what? Uh, know or dominate? That kinda, but we have something important here. Consider when the word can be replaced by a phrase instead of a single word. Like, of course, on the thing that you just said, Chris, uh, is uh, valid for this section, for the glossary example. But here is different. Is it like you are using, like, maybe you are you can use the meaning no, of the word to yes. say the same phrase? Uh -huh. The meaning of the word in, uh, to say the same phrase. Uh -huh. Yeah. An example. It is that. Let me find a word that doesn't have a single synonym. Mm -hmm. uh, this can be a phrasal verb. Let's find a phrasal verb. this one. And always in Spanish. Jesus. Okay, get across. I like this one. Get across. To be communicated or understood. To be communicated or understood, this is a passive voice expression. So this is not similar to communicate. We can think, ah, get across similar to communicate, but look at this example. Your meaning didn't really get across. Your meaning didn't really get across. Do you understand this phrasal verb? No, really. It's difficult, right? Yes. Of course, you need to separate yourself from the word across, only across. Okay. 
get across, to be communicated. If you replace the word get across, Isaac, with be communicated or be understood, how do you read it? Your, your meaning didn't really... Um... <laughs> That's, I don't know. I was thinking about maybe it was understood. Uh -huh. Correct. What parts of the sentence can you, do, you, do you need to substitute? Your, your, your meaning didn't really was understanding. Almost. Was because understood. you used an ing. Uh -huh. Sorry, yeah. And you cannot use didn't at the same time you use was. What oh yes, it? your meaning, your meaning wasn't really understood. Your meaning wasn't really understood. Ta -da. And you can understand that better, right? Yes, uh, yes, it's a little complex. This, this it's confusing, no? Yeah. Wasn't really understood. According to the definition. You can say this, your meaning didn't really get across. It's similar to say your meaning. Let's change the word meaning if it's too difficult to understand. Let's say your message. That's gonna be easier for you to understand. Your message didn't really get across. Your message wasn't really understood. You see how this works? Yes. Is it better? Is it easier to understand? That? Yes, totally. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, right. Well, that's the way we are going to use it. This is precisely the way we are going to use. So, you will need a notebook. I have bad news for you. <sighs> you feel right. Oh, not again. We are advanced. We only want to talk. Yes, but talk actively. You need to talk in an active way. Got it? You got it. Awesome. This is going to definitely help you with, with um, IELTS vocabulary. Oh, yes. yes. And if you want to speak better, you can use it now. I recommend to use You can say over here, a personal glossary and a grammar notes. I recommend use, and then we're gonna use these four tools. Either this, or this, or this. Which ones do you Oh, okay. The tools that you have on top. No, I don't know any of them. You don't know any? Fantastic. What about Chris? You mean the apps? Yep, the apps that you see on top. Yeah, I know. Notion. Um, we'll keep. Awesome. Which ones do you use? The most Notion or Google Keep? Uh, Notion. Nice. Do you use Notion for work? For work and personal. Wow, that's super cool. Me too. I organize my, my personal stuff, my shopping list and my wish list. And I have my studies there. This is my notebook for studying. I do a lot of stuff in Notion. Yeah, it's really useful. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. 
I want to show you what Notion is, Isaac. Let me show you. Yeah. Of course, it's optional, right? Because it is, it is uh, if you are happier with, with uh, notebooks, like physical notebooks, I definitely agree with you. There is there is my third recommendation. It's an Italian book, or oh. a, a Francis book, because you can keep it with you all the time. And every time you see an example or you remember something or you understand, because in advanced, sometimes we have epiphanies. Like, oh, I understand this word. So you need to have your, your notebook very near you every single time. That's the reason I recommend apps. But if you don't like apps, you can use a notebook, but it's important that it's portable, that you need, you, you can have it in your, in your backpack all the time. Okay. Okay. So let me show you my notion over here. Right, over here I organize a lot of stuff have some recipes and I have my shopping list and my skincare and my working calendar. And I technically have a lot of stuff here. My stuff where I study and I need to eliminate this. Ooh, watch list. Every time I have a new series I wanna see or a new movie I need to see, I cannot memorize everything. So technically I use Notion for my, like to eliminate that from my memory and put it there in a physical place. So literally, this is all my brains in one single page, you know? How is it called? Notion. It's amazing. Notion? Okay. Uh, freaking amazing. I love it so much. And if it, as you can see, I have it private. Only I have access here. Mm. But I keep all the all nutshells stuff right here. And I do, me and, uh, and Jesse, we do everything over here. Right now I am working on manuals and, and how to's, you know, how to teach this, how to teach that, you know, all the modules, etc. My databases, etc. And for example, you are here. Look at you. It's like, like Excel list, like, no, sorry, like Microsoft list. Microsoft, which one? Uh, it, it looks similar like uh, micro, as, what's it? Microsoft List. Le I don't know that one. Yeah, well, no I problem. mean, it's it's something similar. You can create like a database. Lists like this? List, uh-huh, yeah. Oh, wow. That's new for me. And it looks the same, no? Wow. Oh, and then you, what can you do here? Uh, and to be honest, I don't know. I just started to use it, well, to practice with it because uh, one of my projects is to create like a, a database for in my office mm -hmm. with all the or with all my clients, my my customers. Interesting. So, um, the office, the the American officer told me that I have to use this app. Ah, okay. Yeah, because it works perfectly with Teams. Yes, exactly. That's why, right? Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can link it to, to all the Microsoft environment. Okay. Yeah, probably, probably can be the same, eh? Probably can be the same. Mm -hmm. And if you're already familiar with that, then definitely you can, you can use it, you know? The point here is precisely the idea is to have a file like the ones my students have made. Look at this guy over here. Oh no. I think he erased his workspace. So what about this one? She did homework glossary. Uh -huh. Look at this girl. My student, Michelle, she did adjectives, adverbs, collocations, idiomatic expressions, and she did a page for her expressions, right? And then she can actually like take notes on that. 
he's a really organized thing. Make sense? I will have some adjectives here. All her vocabulary is here. Super cool. And now. And every time she has a question, she can call me. As you can say, for example, you can click on this one and you can add the teacher. Oh, you, you need to write it over here. You mention me and you say, hey, can you help me? Check if this is correct. Automatically, I receive a notification and I can, I can verify your examples. That's why I recommend. The other apps that I have over here is, the first one is Google Keep. No, the second one, sorry. The second one that Chris knows already is Google Keep, which is just a note taking app for your phone, especially for Android. You link it with a Google account and with a Google account, I can access your, your Google Keep and we can share a note in which you write all your examples, you know? Okay. Similar case, you can mention me, you can add me, and then I can access the, the note and I can open it anytime. And the last one is for iPhone users, same app, but for iPhone. And that's it. That's really useful. Super, right? For, for personal and professional life. Agreed, totally agreed. Let me know which one you want. And I think that I prefer the first one. The first one, Notion. Notion, yeah. Notion is fantastic because actually your, your file, your information, I have it saved on Notion. So all your exams and everything you have done, I have it there in, in, in Notion. So, yeah, so if I pass you the link, when I when you access it, it will request you to to make a an account to open it. So automatically you will you, you will be using it. Okay, yes, it sounds great. Mm -hmm. That's my recommendation. The recommendation on how to study complex words, complex vocabulary, how to expand your vocabulary and have a, a database of words with you. Yes, no, that's something really nice as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. In your case, Chris, how have you been taking notes and what will be the difference? No, sorry, can you repeat? How have you been taking notes on new vocabulary and what mm -hmm. differences would you, would you experience? Mm, well, I used to uh, write Notion, in Notion, sorry. Some words or, or some notes that I consider important. Like also vocabulary, like you, you use Notion for your vocabulary? Yes. Cool. Okay. Can I see? Not right now because I, I am in a cell phone. But... Right, yes, of course. No, any any time, anytime you can. Okay. Uh-huh. And I can actually help you with, with uh, organization and everything. And I strongly suggest you do this with the example. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will do. Mm -hmm. 
like the synonyms and everything. This is super useful. Yeah, I think my notes are now too good because I just take some ideas, uh, but they are unorganized. Okay, so it will be a good idea to, to organize them, to actually sit down and, and make your database, no? Mm -hmm. Correct. And, yeah. Well, you have this chance because that's what will really, really help you organize your mind for the next time you present the exam. This is actually going to help you a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Got it? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So let's give a moment to Jesse because she's in the chat. Hello, Jess. Good night. Thank you. Uh, hello, how are you with the attendance, please? Yes. Is here Christian? Hello, Christian. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you, Christian. Isaac, hello, Isaac. Good night. Hello, good night. Thank you, Isaac. Um, is there still? No, not today. All oh, right. It's okay. So, thank you, Isaac. And thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Hello. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. Very good. With that done, guys, you have homework. Prepare the note. Prepare your, your Notion app. Check if uh, you can access a database. I think, Chris, you have some master with, with databases in Notion. Probably you can use a, uh, some code or something that can help you find words easily. I don't know. Something that really, really can help you. Uh, it's it's actually uh, if you Isaac that you know Excel as well, you can actually no. have databases of Excel similar to Excel in the app. So okay. you your, your all your new words organized in an Excel chart that you can organize by by alphabetical order, by level, by type of word. Ah, oh, okay, okay. No, that's you really useful. A lot of things with Notion. Definitely, I recommend it to, to explore it. Okay, yes, I will try maybe tomorrow. Sure. Please explore it, check it, does your homework, and tomorrow you let me know what, what you did on Notion. Okay? Okay, sure. Awesome, guys. Let's keep it over here. Have a wonderful night. See you tomorrow. Thank you, too. Bye. See you. Bye, guys. See you later.